Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya na Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam in mabad. Another obstacle that prevents a person from making tawbah or uh, repentance is heedlessness. Uh, so Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentioned, he said, one of the greatest reasons why one falls into sins is due to carelessness. Being heedless of Allah, being heedless of Allah's punishment, and not being preoccupied in these two will cause a person to live a life of misery and destruction. The only way one can feel uh, that one can free himself from being heedless of Allah is to be reminded, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitabihi al karim wa dhakir fa inna dhikra tanfa al mu'mineen. Therefore, remind in case the reminder profits them, meaning the believers, al mu'mineen. Muhammad ibn Yusuf said, We were with Zahir al Bani. When a man said to him, Advise us, O Abu Abdurrahman, who replied to them, Be weary upon which state you die upon, and that you don't die in a state of negligence. And this shows us also to, that we want to die on strong Iman. We don't want to die in Kufr. We want to die as believers in Allah. And may Allah bless us with ikhlas, with thabat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تُمُتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And do not die except in a state of belief. Die as believers in Allah, in a high state of Iman. And may Allah bless us to, to, to uh, meet Him in that state. Ameen. Another important aspect that we're reminded in Sheikh Islam he mentioned uh, which is also an obstacle one of the uh, serious obstacles to making Toba that people fall into is thinking Allah will not accept one's repentance to despair at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says O oh my slaves who transgressed against themselves meaning by committing evil deeds and sins. Despair not of the mercy of Allah. Verily, Allah forgives all sins. Truly, He is most forgiving, most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushrika bi wa yaghfiru ma duna thalika liman yasha. That verily Allah does not forgive that you ascribe partners to Him, meaning committing shirk, but He forgives other than that for whomsoever He pleases. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sins. Even He forgives shirk, as long as you make tawbah from it in this life. Meaning this verse is in referring us to that if a person dies upon shirk, then they die and go uh, dwell in the hellfire forever. So it is not befitting that a true believer distance himself from tawbah. That should be a part of a believer's life and a part of a believer's minhaj. And do not despair and think Allah will not accept you meaning accept your tawbah or your repentance. This is not a sign of a true believer and leads to destruction. This is how you will destroy yourself because if you always despair, if you despair at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and just say, khalas, Allah's not gonna forgive me. I'm always committing zina. I'm always drinking wine. I'm always smoking weed. I'm always doing this. If you believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive you, then not only is this not the sign of a believer, but you've given up on Allah, and this is suwadhan billah. This is also not having a a uh, a positive uh, uh, outlook about the mercy of your Lord Subhanahu wa Taala. But instead, this is being a pessimist, and Islam does not leave us to pessimism. And likewise, with that, by despairing at the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that perhaps a person will totally abandon Tawbah and say, I can't be forgiven until they just become a disbeliever. They just leave Islam altogether because they say, hey, I'm drinking wine, I'm smoking weed, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm so sinful, I, I can never get my life right, I'm gonna stop praying. 
Then they stop praying. They say, I'm not in a good state to come back to the masjid and start praying or just to start praying in general. And then slowly but surely, it leads them to disbelief because they despaired at the mercy of Allah. And this goes back to the statement we mentioned in one of the prior sittings, uh, which is a statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, where he said, Al-Ma'asi barid al-Kufr, that sinfulness is a means to disbelief. And this illustrates, that's an example of that uh, statement of Shaykh al-Islam, is that by doing sin, somebody, some people, they despair at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to such an extent that they abandon Toba totally. They, depend, they abandon their worship thinking that they're not pure enough to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then it lead them to just leaving all acts of worship and abandoning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being abandoned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and dying in a state of disbelief. Indeed, Allah is the most merciful, who always forgives his repenting slaves, and none despairs from the mercy of Allah except the disbelieving people. What one is ordered to do is have a good opinion of Allah, and this is what we're talking about, husn al-dhan billah, in all his affairs, even in the last moments of his life, imperative, because it's easy to talk about this, but we don't know how we're going to be on our deathbed, and may Allah bless us with ikhlas, with tabat, with sincerity and firmness upon the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is narrated from Naaman ibn Bashir, who said regarding the statement of Allah, and do not throw yourselves into destruction. If any of you sins, he shouldn't throw himself into destruction by saying Allah will not forgive me. Rather, he should ask Allah for forgiveness, for Allah forgives all sins. A man once asked Bara ibn Hazm, O Abu Ammar, the statement of Allah, and do not throw your hands into destruction. Is this referring to a man who throws himself into destruction by meeting and fighting with his enemies to, until they kill him? Nu'man radiallahu ta'ala who replied, no, this is not what is meant. Rather, what is meant is that a man commits a sin and then says, Allah will not forgive me. This is what it means. So that's a type of destruction. That sinfulness is described as a type of destruction by our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is how the Salaf of this Ummah described it. That this sinfulness and this despair means that you're destroyed. Because yes, we all commit sins. The Prophet وسلم, said, Kullu ibn Adam khatta wa khayran khatayin tawabun. That all the children of Adam, they make mistakes. And the best of those who commit sins is those who repent. So the Prophet وسلم, let us know we all sin. All of us make mistakes, all of us sin. However, those people who despair at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thinking they will never be forgiven, they, they can never come back to Allah, they're destroyed. Because once you give up on Allah, you've given up on your you've given up on everything. Another way in which uh, a person or uh, another obstacle that prevent a person from making Tawbah is thinking one is saved due to his many sins. And this, Ahabatifillah, is something that we find some of the Christian sects do. A particular sect that they, if you ask them, you say, hi, how are you? They say, oh, I'm blessed. Meaning that they believe that they're saved, that, that they no longer have to do any deeds. This is not the creed of the mu'min. This is not the creed of the believers. The Muslims do not have this creed. The Muslim is always between khawf and raja, fearful of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hopeful of his mercy. So a mu'min is between those two things. And a mu'min realizes that, hey, they can't guarantee that they're going to be in paradise. They hope and pray for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and they think the positive. But we don't know in what state we're going to die. And you cannot declare that another person is going to the hellfire or that they are going to Jannah. No matter how righteous and pious they appear to be or how wicked and evil that they appear to be. Because none of us has that power. None of us has that, uh, that ilm al ghayb None of us has that knowledge of the unseen. This is for our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive and guide whomsoever he please. May yahdi Allah for muhtad wa may yudlil fala hadi Allah. Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, then he is guided. And whomsoever he leaves to go astray, then they're led astray. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the many types of evil. So we have to be cautious of thinking of being arrogant 
and misled thinking that one is saved due to his many deeds meaning that you've done a lot of good deeds you're doing talib al-ilm you are doing dawah you are you've done jihad fi sabilillah you're doing uh righteous deeds you're good to your parents you're spending in the cause of allah you're doing all these good deeds but perhaps your sincerity wasn't there as we mentioned countless time the hadith uh of uh I believe it's Ibn Abbas ta'ala or perhaps Abi Huraira ta'ala where the Prophet sallallahu said about the three who will be the first three who will be judged in in, in uh, on the day of judgment. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in al awwal al nas yuqda alayhi yawm al qiyamah rajulan ustushida from amongst the first people that will be judged on the day of judgment is a, is a man who was martyred. فَأُتِيَ بِي فَعَرَفُوا نِعْمُهُ Then he will be, uh, he will be brought and his, his, um, his deeds will be made known. فَقَالَ فَمَعَ مِلْتَ فِيهَا And it will be said, uh, Allah will say to him, and what have you done? قَالَ مَا قَالَ قَتَلْتُ فِيكَ حَتَّ اُسْتُشِدَ I, I fought for your sake until I was martyred. Uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, uh, you have lied. But rather you did it so that the people would say that you were a, uh, that you were a, a brave man. And it was said, فَأُتِيَ uh, Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have him thrown in the fire. And the second one is a man who does talib al-ilm or the alam and he teaches. And likewise, he wasn't sincere and he's thrown in the fire. And the third one is the person who uh, spins in the cause of Allah, or at least this is what he uh, thought he was doing or what he was uh, claiming to do. But in fact, he did it so the people would praise him and they praised him. So he got his reward in this dunya, but in the hereafter, he was uh, khasara. This shows us the importance of being sincere. And it shows us that your deeds alone are not going to save you. You need the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So never despair at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The slave is misled into believing due to the fact that he has many righteous deeds, he will be saved, regardless of whatever sins he commits. So he understands from the statement of Allah the Most High, verily the good deeds remove the evil deeds. He understands this, so he gives up making toba and repentance altogether. He figures that he has enough good deeds, that if he does these um, other sins, these minor sins or major sins, that it's not going to harm him. This is a khata. This is a very big mistake that we have to know that all of us have to make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter what sins, uh, no matter what uh, righteous deeds that we are striving to do. Ibn Aun said, don't rely just on your many deeds because you don't know whether Allah will accept them or not. Uh, there's, there's the shahid of the hadith we already mentioned, ikhlas. We don't know if Allah is going to accept your deeds or not. And don't feel you're saved by the mere fact that you've made tawbah, repentance. Because is, there, because is there a guarantee Allah will accept your tawbah? Because your actions are concealed from you and you don't know what Allah does with them, maybe they could be recorded amongst the successful or maybe they could be recorded amongst losers. Doomed to the fire. And that shows us, Allah, the importance of not relying upon just our deeds and that everyone needs to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make tawbah often. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless the translator for uh, the benefit that he brought in translating this great work by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and also to have mercy and, and, and raise up Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah uh, amongst the uh, and, and put this reading on the scale of his good deeds uh, this great Imam, Imam Ahlul Sunnah, uh, Imam Al Islam, Shaykh Al Islam, Rahmatullah Ali, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless him with Jannah to Firdos, and may Allah forgive us of our many sins. Wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala Nabi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.